Okay, we've already talked about the tangent ratio. Today we're going to learn about sine and cosine ratios. Going to be pretty similar in types of problems. We're going to have to set up some ratios and solve. So today the learning goals are to be able to use sine and cosine, find angle measures, find missing sides, um, solve some real life problems. So the sine and cosine ratios, again, are used on the acute angles in a right triangle. Um, the notes that are in the core concept box are great. It gives you the ratio, it gives you the triangle, it gives you the side lengths. What I always encourage students for, to remember is this acronym SOCATOA. Because if you can kind of sound it out in your head, it helps you memorize how to set them up. So sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent, we already learned, is opposite over adjacent. So if I sound out that SOCATOA, it will help me learn what are the sides that I need to put on top and bottom. So similar to what we saw with tangent ratio, we have to find the fractions of the acute angles and reduce them if we can and then write them as a decimal to four places and again we'll get to why that four places is significant here pretty soon so on this one it wants us to find the sine of s the sine of r and then it wants us to find the cosine of s and the cosine of r now before i do the calculator and the decimals i want to show you what's significant and we'll talk about it here in just a second about sines and cosines and their relationship. So let's start with the sine of S. If I look at, at this acute angle, if I do sine, the ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. So I want to do opposite over hypotenuse. So we put 63 over 65 and we reduce it if we can, but on this one we can't. <clears throat> the sine of my other acute angle R opposite of 16 over hypotenuse is still 65. Again, reduce if possible, but we can't hear. Now, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I go to cosine of S, adjacent is 16, hypotenuse is 65. So I have 16 over 65, and then adjacent to R is 63 over 65. Now, if I look at my fraction values here, we should notice that the sine of the angle is going to be equal. It should be the equal fraction to the cosine of the other angle. So the same thing applies for R also. The sine of the R is equal to the cosine of the S, and that applies all the time. So when we're setting up our ratios and doing these fractions, that's how those will work every single time. Now for the calculator, if I do 16 divided by 65... I get 0 0.2462, so 2462, 0 0.2462, and it's the same here, 0 0.2462, and then I want to do 63 over 65, so we'll punch that in real quick, so 63 divided by 65, uh, 9692 is what it rounds to, so equals 0 0.9692 equals 0 0.9692. Okay, and again, we'll get into why we want four decimal places when we're finding missing angles. So our core concept box here kind of helps us with what we just talked about. It says if I have the sine of one acute angle, it's going to be equal to the cosine of the other acute angle. So some of your problems are just this simple. We are given the sine of 56. They want us to write it in cosine. So if I want to write it in terms of cosine, I'm going to say it's the cosine of whatever 90 minus 56 is. And again, we just say that's equal to the cosine of 34. And those will be equal if you punch them in your calculator. You'll have several problems just like that. So if it gives you cosine, you're going to do sine minus 90. Okay, now here's kind of the more important types of problems. Now, if we mix these all in with tangent, it gets to be kind of confusing. But remember, if we can figure out and memorize this acronym, it should help us set these up. Now, ideally, when I'm doing fraction problems, I like to have my variable on bottom so that I can multiply my number um, off the bottom onto the other side. It's just a little easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do here. When I go to solve for x, I want to get x over 14. Well, if I look at the angle that they give me, x is opposite that angle. So I have opposite and hypotenuse. 
And that should help me determine what ratio I want, and that would be sine. So the sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. If I want to solve for y with it on top, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, the angle that I know is 26. So I'm going to say the sine of 26 degrees is equal to x over 14. And now I can multiply that 14 off the bottom and solve it like this. Same thing applies for cosine. So the cosine of 26 is equal to the adjacent, and that's y over my hypotenuse is still 14. So now I can just punch both of these in. So my first one, we'll punch in here real quick. I have 14 times the sine of 26. I hit equals. Um, let's see, 16 point, it'll probably ask you to round to the 10th. So we'll put 16.1. Okay, so x is approximately 16.1. For y, we'll punch it in. So 14 times the cosine of 26 is equal to 12.6. So 12.6. Now we want to make sure our answers are reasonable. And if I look at this here, something's not quite right. So if I did the sine, if I did the sine, did I put 16 instead of another number? It was 6, not 16. Yeah, 6.1. See, there's a perfect example, and I made that mistake too. I put 16. It should be 6.1. We should make sure our answers are reasonable. 14 should be my longest side length, okay? I put 16.1. That's not a reasonable answer for that smaller side, especially since it's opposite the 26. It should be the shortest side length. So once I went back and looked at my calculator, I saw that I made a mistake. Make sure you guys check for stuff like that. It should help you find your reasonable answers. So take a moment, pause. Again, I'm going to go quickly through this just for the sake of time in the video. I probably won't write the decimals out just because it's, again, time consuming. Um, I sure will do the ones for number three, though. Okay, so pause, try these. So sine D is going to be equal to what's opposite? 7 over 2, 5 sine F is equal to 2, 4 over 2, 5. Okay, that means that uh, cosine D is equal to 24 over 25. And then cosine F is equal to 7 over 25. Okay, write the terms and uh, the cosine of 23 in terms of sine. So that's going to be the sine 90 minus 23 is 67 degrees. And then finding T and U. So now this time 65 is in that top corner. If I wanted to find T opposite over hypotenuse, it's going to be the sine of 65 is equal to T over 8. And then cosine of 65 is going to be equal to U over 8. So I can punch those in real quick. 8 times sine 65. So 8 times sine 65 equals 7.3 for sine, approximately 7.3, and then 8 times cosine 65, so 8 times cosine 65, I get 3.4, so approximately 3.4. Again, check your answers, make sure they're reasonable, looks good to me. Okay, so there's the monitoring progress for the first half. Okay, find sine and cosine of an angle 45 degrees. Now, again, remember, those 45 degree and 30, 60, 90 degree triangles will pop up for us from time to time. The 45, 45 had the pattern like this. So it doesn't really matter what we plug in for X. It's easiest if we make the side length 1. So that means that my side lengths are 1, 1, and then my hypotenuse is 1 times the square root of 2, which is just the square root of 2. So if I set up my sine ratio for this 45-45-90 uh, triangle, sine of 45 degrees is going to equal opposite over my hypotenuse. And when I simplify this, again, I have to rationalize that square root of 2 off the bottom 
Okay, so we multiply straight across. On top, we get the square root of 2. On bottom, we get 2. So the square root of 2 over 2 is my answer. That's probably what Big Ideas is going to be looking for, not necessarily the decimal answer. Okay, the cosine of 45 degrees, you'll see here, is the same thing because both sides are adjacent. So the cosine adjacent is 1 over hypotenuse is still the square root of 2. So cosine and sine are both going to give me the square root of 2 over 2. Again, don't be surprised if you have to draw this out for the 30, 60, 90 triangle as well. But this is the answer that we want. We want to simplify those radicals and put that in there. Again, when you get to trig, it's going to be a lot of this type of stuff. Okay, so just like I brought it up, we'll probably see that 30, 60, 90. Here it is. We have to recall the 30 degree angle opposite that is my short leg opposite that 60 degree angle. So this is our 60 is short leg times the square root of three. My hypotenuse is two times my short leg. Again, it's easiest if we just let X equal one. So my short leg is one. My long leg is going to be one times the square root of three, which is just the square root of three. And my hypotenuse will be two times one, which is just two. Now we can set this up. So the sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite, which is 1, over hypotenuse, which is 2 times x, or which is just 2. Let's just call it 2. So the hypotenuse is 2. I just put 1 over 2. The cosine adjacent is 1. Nope, sorry. Adjacent is the square root of 3 over hypotenuse is 2. So that's what the cosine of 30 degrees equals. Now keep in mind, the cosine and sine of 60 degrees are going to be something kind of similar to these. It's going to be equal. But if you punch sine of, uh, sine of 30 degrees and hit equals in your calculator, you should get 0. 0.5. That should help you out. Okay, so there's my two expressions for cosine and sine of 30. So this was still the cosine of 30. All right, so the monitoring progress just wants you to find the sine and cosine of 60. Again, you can pause and do this yourself. I'm going to do this quickly for the sake of time in the video. Make sure you ask questions if you have them, though. So my cosine, um, my cosine and sine should have a similar relationship to what we had up above. So the sine of 60, sine of 60 degrees opposite is square root of 3 over hypotenuse is 2. The cosine of 60 degrees is adjacent 1 over hypotenuse 2. So you can see that those are the same values that we got up above, just flip-flopped. All right, and then our modeling our real-life problem here. So they're trying to find the distance you're skiing down this hill. They know the elevation of the mountain is 1,200 feet. So we can use our ratios here. Again, it's a matter of picking the correct one. So here's our angle of decline, 21 degrees. If we look at the relationship to the side, we know it's opposite. So we have opposite, and we are trying to find the hypotenuse. That ratio opposite over hypotenuse is the sine. So the sine of 21 degrees is equal to 1,200 over x. And again, if we want to solve for sine here, we flip-flop these. So we have to take 1,200 divided by the sine of 21. So if we take 1,200 divided by the sine of 21, and again, it might say round to the foot or tenth. I can't remember. I'm guessing it says foot. So it's going to be 335. It's going to be 335 feet. Let's double check that just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. 335 feet. So 1,200. Did I do 120? That's not long enough. That's something wrong there. Let's check that. Yep, I didn't do enough. So clear. 1, 2, 0, 0. Divided by sine 21 equals. There we go. 3,349. Uh, so 3... Fat fingering my new calculator. Three, three, four, nine feet. That makes more sense. There we go. So again, you guys, um, we're, we can do that 28 degrees. It's going to be the same thing here. Um, so you're going to do 1,200 
divided by the sine of 28 and you can see what it is we'll punch it in here real quick so 1200 make sure i get enough zeros divided by the sine of 28 okay so it's a little bit steeper hill that shortens up the length of the ski so 2556 is our answer on that one so 2556 is our answer there there we go okay so again, guys, hopefully we were able to figure out kind of those sine cosine ratios. Make sure you ask questions if you have them. We'll utilize our time wisely. Make sure you're working things out on paper. That's really starting to catch up to quite a few of us when we don't. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.